Welcome, in this video we'll be making a animated spider for Halloween. Might not be Halloween anymore when you're watching this, but if it is, you're good to go. So what the premise is, is someone walks into a room and the spider automatically detects them and it drops down and gives them a fright. So in the video we'll be covering Arduino, uh, PIR sensors, micro switches and motors. There's two versions you can make. You can make one is with, you can 3D print one, or one you can make out of wood. So if you don't have a 3D printer, you're not going to be stuck, you can still make the wood version. Uh, it's going to be a long video, so I suggest you have a look at the show notes for the chapters for the particular thing that you're interested in. And also when there will be the links to all the STL files, PDF files, sketch files, everything you need so you can make the project along with a bit of a parts list. So uh, with all that, let's get started. For this project we're using a Arduino Uno, uh, mainly because they're easy enough to find anywhere. So if you want to build this project, you shouldn't have any issues finding one of these boards, they're pretty popular. If you already know everything about Arduinos and how they work, just double tap on your screen, it'll go to the next chapter. If you don't, stick around, I'll just give you a quick bit of information about this board. This board's got all these headers down the sides, and this is where we plug in our sensors and whatnot. Uh, for this project, we're using a PRR sensor, which detects the motion, and a limit switch, which is a micro switch, and we're going to drive a motor as well. So we need two pins for the motor, for the forward and reverse, one pin for the uh, PRR sensor, one for the micro switch. Down here, we've got some analog ports, so we don't need this for this particular project. We use those for measuring things like light dependent resistors or any sensor which puts out an analog signal. And down here, we can supply power to the, to the board. You can supply power to the board through the USB plug or the barrel jack there. But for this particular project, we're going to use the V in here. We can supply a voltage higher than 5 volts and it regulates it out for the rest of the board. The pro to program this with our, our little program to make the spider go up and down, you'll need the IDE software. If you haven't got that already or don't know anything about it, check this video up here. It's not about this particular project, but it has instructions in there on how to install the software. It's pretty straightforward, just like any other program. And of course, it's free. So go ahead and install the program and we'll come back and program this up with the PIR sensor. So to detect the movement, we're using this PIR sensor. And unless you're staying bed all day today, you've probably already used one of these. It's used on doors, automatic opening doors at supermarkets, or it's used in burglar alarms just to detect movement. This sensor comes with this funky looking lens on it, which reflects all the light onto the sensor there. So as a normal walking, breathing human being, you'll be um, radiating heat out and the sensor detects that heat and then goes high. So we've got three connections on the back with the ground, the power and the uh, signal wire. So once it detects there is some movement, it goes, um, it goes high. We've got some adjustments on the side here. One is for uh, sensitivity or kind of like a range. And the other one is for how long we want it to stay high for when it detects movement. And for our circuit, we only want to stay high for a short amount of time because once it gets a high signal, the microcontroller should take over. So we'll get that out quite low. So we'll put a circuit together to show how it works and then we'll implement it into our project. Okay, so we've got our circuit all hooked up here. We've got our power coming from the uh, 5 volts of the Arduino and the ground coming from the ground. The signal is going to pin 2 for no other reason than that's what it'll be cool. And the power at the moment is coming through the USB plug so I can program it in power at the same time. So we'll jump into the code and see what's happening. So here we've got a very short script which pretty much uh, just tests to see what's happening. So in the beginning we just define our pin 2 like I mentioned before. Pin 2 is going to be our input for the sensor. Pin 13 I know is the LED pin for this unit. So on the um, Arduino itself it's got a little LED light here and it's it's output 13 so if I want to turn that on or off I can just specify that as output 13 and then in here we set it up so LED pin is an output and PIR pin is an input and then we just start a loop and this loop is what the Arduino will do the entire time so look at PIR state digital read is a PR pin so it's reading that digital that PR pin sort of constantly throughout the loop and if it ever goes high I want it to turn the LED on tell me that it's turned on right I've got a delay of one second here because PR is just I've uh, adjusted that potentiometer so it's turning on for a few seconds because I just want to click over I don't want it to stay on for very long at all 
so I've set this delay of 1000 so which is 1000 milliseconds which is one second so it'll, the LED should light up for one second when I move in front of the PIR sensor and once it finishes I want the light to go off again and then it'll just continue its loop up here I've got PIR state is zero so initially the PIR is zero right because we decided that the PIR state goes to high when it detects any movement so what I'll do is now is I'll swap back to, to the full screen of the circuit and to see what happens when we wave our hand in front of it so this she is the circuit and like I say again there's this LED here and when I wave my hand in front of the circuit it should technically uh, turn on the LED light which it does which is great that's exactly what we want it to do and it stays on for one second so I can just do that forever probably and it'll stay on for one second so that's what we're going to use to detect movement to make the spider drop down so next thing we need to look at is the motor so you have a little motor driver board uh, I don't even need to connect this up to to the Arduino or to um, test it working you can just all this board wants is to have a high signal on one of the inputs this board itself can drive two motors but we only have one motor here so we're not too fussed about it so if this gets a high signal on any of these inputs the motor should turn so we've got our power going in here from the Arduino board so this is using the onboard regulator you might if you've got a motor which draws a lot more power you might want to direct connect the, the motor directly to the battery or whatever power supply you have just to predict the um, regulator on this board this is motors doesn't draw much current at all so I'm not too fussed about it so if I put this one of these connectors onto the uh, positive voltage the motor should turn and if I put the other one on it should turn in the other direction which it does and if I put them both high the motor should um, have a sort of a braking thing going on it does the tape's actually spinning on the shaft so what do you do so we need to, s to connect these onto our we're doing it to two outputs and then put them on on and off either side when we want to change the direction of the motor so we'll jump into the uh, doing a code now to see how we're going to do that and come back and test it so we've got some simple code uh, put together here with this to defining our pins I'm using pin 5 and pin 6 there's digital outputs to drive the motor and then I'm just giving them names as motor forward and forward reverse and defining them as outputs and then for this loop it's just going to turn the motor on forward for two seconds and then reverse for two seconds and just continue this loop so we'll just run this code to the Arduino and see if we get what we're after and you can see there it's indeed spinning one way for two seconds and then spinning the other way for two seconds so that work <clears throat> so we've got our PIR sensor working we've got a motor working next thing to do is it's going to be the limit switch and we'll discuss a bit more about that now so the last piece of this electronics puzzle is the micro switch and what do we need a micro switch for well when we've got the circuit together and we put something in front of the PIR to motion the spider to go up and down it's got no way of knowing where the top is so we set up a micro switch and that detects the position of the spider for the 3d printer version of this anyway there's a paddle when the micro switch is activated by the paddle and then the spider goes down for the next deploy so the last sensor to connect is going to be the easiest it's, it's probably the easiest sketch to do next to um, blinking an led in fact i have just used the sketch which comes in the examples so if you go into arduino and you've got um, examples it's got basics and button and this code is pretty much just that code for button pretty straightforward we're using pin 7 as an input pin and LED 13 again like we did previously and in the loop we set up there well first we set up the input output sorry for the LED and the input we use input pull up because we want to in this case instead of the switch going high it's going to go low so we just set this as input pull up in the loop it just cycles through as it did in the previous programs and here it's just constantly keeping an eye on that button pin so whenever it's it's pushed it'll turn on the LED no 
great mystery what's going to happen here so we just click on we just click the button and our LED turns on and off so we're good to go so we've got the uh, PIR sensor the motor running and the limit switch running we just need to uh, join it all together so you've either just finished watching how the project works or you've just jumped straight here for the first chapter because you just want to watch it being built right so there's two um, chapters to follow one is going to be the one about uh, how to build it with if you're going to use 3d printed model and the one after that is going to be the wood build so you can choose between either or or you can watch both after which i will see you at the end okay welcome to the 3d printed version of this project if you don't have a 3d printer that's fine just check the chapters there's a wooden version to get the same result so i'm just going to go with the parts we need here i have the there will be on my hackaday and instructors account there will be a full-on version so you can read the details there if you want to or even on my website to get a full breakdown but the parts we need we need a micro switch pir sensor motor controller dc motor these are pretty easy to come by i've just got this one out of old toothbrush and an arduino uno to drive it all together and our 3d components stls will be in those articles as well uh, the main part which holds all the bits together a, a little paddle thing which activates when the spider hits the top a spooling gear a drive boss PIR sensor holder and the spider it's white at the moment because we're going to do some testing it'll be easier to see what's going on and a bunch of screws so those are all the bits let's put it together and see how it goes okay so welcome we'll start putting this assembled we'll start assembling this now my workshop looks like a, a shambles so i show you that's all i'm going under control so we've got all the bits here and we'll we'll put it together and see what we end up with so uh this is the the main part which holds everything the motor the battery the, the uno um oh, there's sort of i think there's lots of different versions of the unos and the screw holes although they do match up some of them don't have some of the screw holes but i've i've got a dis dissimilar i'm not sure what it is but anyway it has one of these holes was not there but the other holes did line up so I'm sort of fingers crossed that you'll be able to find one that which fits so basically we start screwing things in so the first thing I'm going to do is just going to pop in this board with some screws so these screws here are two and a half ish millimeter these are all millimeters sorry imperial people and the length maybe at six millimeters five and a half millimeters so we'll just screw these in Okay, so that's our Arduino and mixing. We might as well do the motor. So, in the um, bit prior to this, you would have seen the boss. And basically, it's a bit of plastic. You just support this motor with a bit of um, a hard bit at the bottom, like this. You get the boss, you put it on top, and you just tap it down with a small hammer, and it goes over the shaft, and then it sort of doesn't move. So, what happens then is this gear which um, fits out of the boss there's a hole in the middle and you just thread the cotton through so you don't have to tie a knot in it and then once it's on it holds the, the spool right so the motor just slides in here with the contacts up like that and then on the side here we've got two holes for the micro switch and the micro switch has two screws that holds it in place these are 2.4 mils maybe two millimeters i guess by 13. <coughs> one of these screws will go all the way in and the other one will go in and after contact with the motor stop the motor from sliding in and out and here is our micro switch which we uh, just fit there your micro switch maybe doesn't have this bent bit but of course you can just bend it around a little bit of pliers to get the uh, the right angle so we'll screw that in 
So that's it's just for locating right. So this one should be relatively tight, and this little one just tight enough to hold the motor in. So I've not got it in far enough there. Yeah. It's nice and tight. The motor's not going to go anywhere just to hold it in position. The next thing we want to put on is our sensor which goes underneath. This is the sensor holder and it's got two adjustments so as long as they line up with the holes. They're pretty good. And we just thread the wires through this hole in the back. So it doesn't sort of matter, you can either have the adjustments at the front or the back. It should, doesn't matter, but I guess it'd be easier at the front so you can tweak it from the front if you want to. And the screws holding that in place are these nice new ones and they are sort of 18 and it's with a thread it's 3 so it must be 18 by 3. Alright, so it's screwed in. I'm not going to put two in for now because you know it's not going to go. In. It's not going to. It's not going to go anywhere. And okay, sweet. And the other one is the motor controller, and and it's there's a little hole at the top here where the motor controller fits in, and it's got a couple of little standoffs here to hold it in place as well. So we've got our motor controller in. Our PIR sensor, the Arduino, and that's it really. We just need to put the battery in, and the battery connectors with this board. Um, we've got an earth, a ground, sorry, for the motor controller, for the PIR sensor, the micro switch, and we don't have one for for the battery, which is fine because what I'm going to do is there's an extra ground tag here, so I'm just going to have a, a header off there so I can, if I want to pull the power, I just pull the plug out of that. So I'll just add an extra wire onto that so I can disconnect and add the battery power as I please. We want 5 volts for the PIR sensor. PIR sensor will work up to 60 to 20 volts, I think it was. But we've got 5 volts here, so it's wasn't sufficient and the motor controller is 5 volts as well and then we just have to look at the code just to see where the motors are I think it's 5 and 6 for the motor controller the PIR is number 2 for memory and the limit switch is on 7 so I've just noticed that uh, I'm not solder the motor up so I'm going to solder up the motor add an extra connector onto the um, for the ground for the battery and then we'll come back and turn it on and see what happens but the other thing as well is we've got to put the the limit arm on so this it takes a screw that goes all the way through so let me sort that out and we'll have another go okay so uh, I've got my motor all uh, wired up now and I've got my extra fly lead here for my ground and I'm just going to put this screw in, this is a massive screw, it's way longer than it needs to be it's 3 millimeters. I think it's like 60 mils across but it's way way longer than that but we can just put it in, it doesn't have to screw in but is for this to bounce back like that all right so there needs to be no friction in there at all and it's pretty much ideal so if we hook our battery up now I'm pretty sure this is programmed so this is 9 volts and these Arduino boards run off 5 so there is a V in line here on the board and that will regulate it to the right voltage so if, don't plug this into 5 volts on the board plug it into the in I went we've got the power uh, 
and this battery is dead. So I get another one. Okay, let's try again with a decent battery. Okay, so it looks like it's it's up and running. Um, if I move at all, it will uh, you know, a sensor will trigger us. We don't have the cotton on at the moment, so if I just move my finger, away it goes. The motor's speeding up with it pulse with modulation as discussed in the code. Don't know where you must set. And it'll keep on running. Because as far as the nose now, the spiders are dropping like a uh, like a rock, and it should be coming up, and then we'll hit the limit switch. And the light will stay on for 10 seconds because we want it to well i want it to wait 10 seconds between giving a fright and then it goes off again so it's working as expected um well, what we're going to do now is grab our spool thread our cotton through with our spider Hook it up on the roof and just see if we can get it to um, work correctly. So it's the next step. Can you see me? I don't know if we're so far away. So I'm just going to um, attach this up here and just give it a bit of a test. I've just got some screws. There will be a cover. I've not printed it because it's a huge waste of plastic. I just want to. I don't think I need it, but there will be a cover design you can. We'll enclose it all, maybe weatherproof it. So many spiders all the way down at the moment. Hopefully you can see that. And I'll get the power. I mean, paddle's sticking a bit there, so it's, I need to tweak that a little bit. Still jamming up the top there. So there's a few things going on there, the paddle is jamming and uh, if you watch the code section of it, I was talking about the acceleration. The spider's coming down but it's not coming up fast enough to activate the paddle as well. And the other thing is the, the spider's getting caught in its, its web so I need to tweak the little paddly thing and increase the acceleration so hopefully it's got enough momentum to come up and switch it off. So we'll do that now and give it another go. Pretty sure I nailed it. This is uh, there's so many variables. It'd be great for a STEM course or something. You've got the length of the cotton, you've got the weight of the spider, you've got the speed that it comes down, and you've got all these things to make it work. And you just got to tweak each one of those slightly to get the right effect. And it works every time. So it's a bit tricky. A bit of a design flaw in that pedal thing. I had like a right angle thing, and it was stuffing things up so I, snap, I don't even know why I put it there but I've snapped it off it's way happier as well yeah so I think we're good to go so now we're going to move on to the wood vision welcome to the wood version of the build I appreciate that everybody has access to a 3d printer so um, as long as you've got a, a drill a coping saw or jigsaw 
in some 4.75 millimeter MDF you should be able to build this as well you need three millimeter eight millimeter and ten millimeter drills as well so along with these bits you'll need these components some large cable ties and a cotton spool which you find for sewing machines a micro switch a PIR sensor a motor controller a motor these are pretty easy to come by I got this one out of an old toothbrush and a Duena Uno to um, run it all together so once you got all those bits together we'll um, start building the project so we need to make the chassis for everything to sit in uh, out of MDF and to do that I've just got a template here and basically what you do is you print off this template when you print it make sure your um, scaling is zero because this is the actual measurements it needs to be for it to, to work and then I um, spray painted the back of this with some spray glue and then I pushed it down onto MDF and just let it set and then these lines are for the thickness of a blade it's like a jigsaw blade or a coping saw blade so as long as you have that in the middle you're probably gonna get, you should get the sizes about right the drill holes are all marked out as well as to what size they should be so hopefully that's good enough and the other way to do it is you can be like me and cheat and get them all laser cut <clears throat> so i went down to local university and they've got every machine you can think of down there and they kindly cut this out for me and um it's real time saver because i needed to get this out before halloween and if i had cut it all out i wouldn't have so it's all cut so we're just going to start assembling it together pretty nervous about this because this is not something i've even tried or i've only mocked it up in fusion so whether it actually works or not i'm not sure but first thing to do would be to um glue the the back i'm just assuming because i don't i don't know glue the, glue the back and the sides together and let that set i'm hoping pva will just be enough to do the trick if not i might have to go down a hardware store and get some sort of l brackets but for now i'm just going to pva this together with the sides on so it's all one thing and then um, start assembling it from there so I'll go do that and once that's set we'll come back and continue okay for this part of the board it's just a case of putting a generous amount of glue on each bit of wood and then lining them up and make sure they're nice and square so just leave them on your table to set while it's drying we'll make our paddle activation um, arm thing uh, so I have a template here so you just cut it out on a piece of paper and we need to stick it onto something plastic so I'm just going to use a ice cream container lid you might be able to find something else glue it down and when it's dried uh, drill out the holes and then cut it out with a sharp knife and then um, that'll be good to go so we can complete the rest of the gluing and then we um, have these little standoffs at the back this is where the Arduino will be screwed into place so I've just used some nails here just to make sure I line everything up sort of nicely with those holes and once they're all in place we just let them sit and dry also and we just got the big mount motor mount so the motor mount motor is going to sit on these two bits of wood uh, this is going to sit a bit higher uh, so the spool doesn't catch on the edge of the wood and then we move on to our go on to locating the motor mount in place so it's just got four holes here this is going to be cable tight ends so we're just going to line that up nicely so it doesn't block the holes and glue that down and let it set also once that's done we've got to get our spool ready so we just nail our six millimeter dowel or whatever fits your spool into place cut off the excess uh, dowel and then we need to drill a hole in the end of it and just start as small and accurately as you can it's have to be super up in as mill as possible will be good and then once the holes drilled out support the back of the motor on something solid and then just uh, carefully tap this ball and the dowel onto the shaft of the motor just uh, being mindful not to try and bend the shaft or do any damage there once it's all done we're all ready to fully assemble the unit Okay, so by this point you've amassed all the parts together to put this project together. So we're just going to go ahead and 
do that now. First thing I want to do is put the um, Uno on. That's pretty straightforward. That's just four. It's just four screws. So you've got the screw four screws here, and they just line up with what's on there. And it's just a couple of short self tappers to screw it in. Some of these soldering joints stick out a bit proud, and they might, if you want to, might just want to grind off the edge of some of these. So it sits flat, but I'm not too fussed about it. It's not. It's not too much of a major, so we'll just screw this in quickly. Okay, so that's pretty pretty straightforward and painless. Next thing we'll do is we'll pop in the micro switch. So the micro switch sits on the end here, and um, this flapper thing that we made earlier will screw on underneath our sensor, and every time the spider comes to the top, it should flip the switch. So we'll just pop that switch in. There's just the whole layer for the wiring to go through. Okay, so that's all in. Next thing we want to try and put in is the, uh, the sensor itself, the PIR. So for that, we're just going to stack these bits on top of each other, right? Like this, to build up the, the sensor holder and the little screws for the adjustments come out the front and this pedal thing gets screwed in inside it like that as well so the whole thing is pushed together and we just use these screws so I went down to my hardware shop and I had the option of too short or too long so I had got too long so for four of these and I've just got to try and persuade them all down uh, together and We'll give that a go. Okay, everything's in. I'm going to just chuck some nuts on to hold it in place. Okay, so that's the sensor in. And you can see our paddle. You should better hear it. It's, it's clicking, which should be good. And next thing we want to do is we want to pop on the motor. So the motor's going to be held in here with two big cable ties. I suggest at this point you hook up your your spider at the same time because it's going to be a bit of a mission trying to attach your cotton onto the spool and this when it's in there. I have to go with my uh, 3D printed spider. I couldn't find, even at this time of year, I couldn't find any plastic spiders. So we'll just use this one for now for testing, but you should be able to find one at your local toy shop maybe um, to test with. So we'll just hook it up before we continue, so just thread it through because that's where it's going to be pulling it from. And just through any hole in here really. That's in, and you want to put your cable toys through. And you want these things, big bits on the end. There's probably a technical name for them. To be on this, this side, you don't want them underneath like that because this baffle's got to go up and down. Okay, so that motor's not going to go anywhere. <clears throat> I just noticed my motor controller wire is broken off both ends, so I just need to solve that quickly. Okay, so there's no pretty way to mount this speed controller. It's got not got me. Well, it's got a screw hole there, but it's got crap. So I'm just going to put some double-sided tape here and just stick it down to the ball to the wood. It's just good as anything. It's insulated. Okay, so that's kind of the hardware all connected up to the to the unit. And next thing, we'll just plug the wires in. Now, this video is just to complement the the guides, right? So. Uh, Hack day instructables in my website all have the full documents with all the wiring diagrams and everything so if you're thinking well where does all those wires go just check the docs because they'll have a PDF with all the diagrams all the STLs if you're going to do a 3d printed and the all the templates if you want to print them off and cut out all these things as well as a laser laser cutting version which is a slightly different file to PDF for printing off in wood because all the lines have got to overlap 
and it's designed to reduce the cutting time for laser cutting. It should only take a few minutes to cut um, if you're going to do it that way. But anyway, we'll plug all this in and um, get it done. So from memory, our PIR is pin 2, the micro switch is 7, the motor is 5 and 6, and we've got a ground PIR, we've got taking 5 volts out of the board for the PIR. I'm going to use this ground for the micro switch. If you look at the 3D printed version, it'll tell you why. And a ground and a 5 volts for the motor controller, which leaves us the ground in the V in. So we don't want to put this is this is a 9 volt battery, and these UNOs work off 5 volts. So don't plug this directly into the 5 volts. Plug it into the V in. I'm going to plug this in. That motor is probably going to kick off. Yes, it is. <clears throat> so once once this is completed, the motor battery will actually I'm going to have to swap Earth around, rounds around. It's going to be cable tied around here, so it sits in there the whole time. And you just pull the plug out when you don't want to use it, right? So I'll swap ground. Get it right. It's got no spider to stop it spinning. <clears throat> So this isn't really working well for me, so I need to get some stronger tape. So I'll get the stronger tape on there. I'll attach my spider. Mm, rocky. And then um, we'll do some testing, see how it works. <coughs> okay, I'm going to test the wood addition. Now I've just got it clamped up there, because uh, I haven't decided how I'm going to mount it yet. I'll hook up the power. So far so good. Out of the box, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just using the same code as for the plastic version. I thought I might need to alter it because the spool diameter is quite a bit bigger than on this one. It looks fine. So that wraps up this project. Congratulations, you've made it this far. Um, if you've not used Arduino or anything before, hopefully you've got enough information about to get these bits together and make this thing. Mm, maybe before Halloween, I'm not too sure. But if you like watching videos about things you can make, please consider subscribing because that's the sort of videos I, I like to make. Aside from that, thanks for watching.